Hey, what's up, everybody? Goblin here. So, you know, it poses the question, what do you do for internet when you want to live out in the absolute middle of nowhere? Well, you can try satellite, or you're probably going to see if you can't bounce off a cell tower somewhere. So on today's episode... So the first thing you probably do out here is you buy a cellular modem. Here's the Mophie 4500. This is the top of the line model they currently offer. And you plug your SIM card into there and you're just like, yeah, I got internet out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, you rush over to your favorite speed test website. Here you can see HTML5 speed testing. And you let it rip and you're like, oh, I've got bad internet. I mean, it's better than nothing out in the middle of nowhere, but look at my signal quality and my, uh, my signal strength. Poor. It's pretty bad. Here you can see I'm getting like sub 2. What is this going to be like 1.9? About 1.9 down. And then if, you're, if you've been watching the Linus Tech Tip forums, Ars Technica forums, or some subreddits like R Networking, you might have seen that we were playing around with satellite dishes to see if we couldn't get better signal off of this for free. Just old satellite dishes. And we, we had some pretty good results with this. Um, as I'll speed test before we take this thing down, you can see we automatically went from a poor rating in the software to a fair rating. And look at that, we're already up past what we used to have. You can see the latency is a little bit tighter as well. So I mean, for a freebie hack, it, it totally worked. But this is, this is a video called Extreme LTE Networking. So we're gonna see what we can do about this. But I wanted to point out that just taking an old satellite dish and playing with it worked beautifully. It, you can see the increase here. And if that's all you had, like we, like the last time we were out here in the middle of nowhere for the weekend for the holiday, that's, that's all we had. This was a huge increase for us. Of course, then we went back to the city, ordered some parts and waited for the next time to come out here to the middle of nowhere. And now we're going to play what's in this box. Here is uh, the first of two LMR400 jumpers. These are 25 foot, 50 ohm cables. I'll actually lose one dB per of these cables. Um, at least that's what I'm supposed to lose. Some shipping paperwork here. And that other one was wedged in there, but this one's pretty loose so you guys can actually see um, what LMR400 looks like. It's, it's pretty rigid cable. Here we have our in end to the cable which will uh, connect to a surge protector probably. And here we have our SMA end. And this is an SMA male that will connect to the router. Pretty neat. So we've got two of these. And let's see what else we have in here. Oh, we got a box in a box. I always love those. Oh, we've got boxes in a box in a box, even better. I'm loving the shipping. Let's see what's in these. These right here are actually surge protectors. These are gas tube lightning surge protectors. This is a in female to in male bulkhead. These run zero to three gigahertz and they run 90 volts. You can actually see right where my thumb is here um, where you ground it. And that's a very important process. We're just gonna test these things without the grounding plugged in, but as soon as this goes to a permanent location, you need to ground these. So we have two of them because we have two cables. And we have two sides that we need to come out on the modem, which leaves what? Oh, snap. Look at this. These are some beautiful ZDA communications Yagi's. These are the band 12, 700 megahertz Yagi's. Technically they run 698 to 755 megahertz. Look at that construction quality. And one thing that makes their, their company nice is that they actually rivet everything in place. So you can see that. I'm really happy to see the construction quality here. You can build these yourself for about 10 bucks, but you're obviously not going to get the same quality as just buying them from a professional company. Uh, ZDA does all sorts of government installation and such too, so they're, they're a reputable company. And here you can see where they've attached the signal cable. Where did they braze this in? Right there, that's where they brazed it in. I mean, very nice unit here. So here's a Yagi and then another Yagi. So these are their actual biggest Yagis they sell. Um, these are just shy of six feet once uh, put together. But that's not it. We're, we're, we're not done going nuts on it. We have another box over here that I'm grabbing while trying to pan the camera. And that 
Look at this, look at this packaging of the shipping. We've got a whole box, just full of nothing. Oh yeah, we, two 9 dBi, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antennas. These are to replace the normal Wi-Fi antennas on the unit to get some of that extra range. Since we're out in the middle of nowhere, it'd be nice to be able to walk around the property and still have internet. These are not expensive, but obviously they don't come default with the Mopi. Very nice. Just toss this other box on the floor. And there you have it, guys. Here's our instructions for the Yagis. If you were looking for any of the electrical specifications, that, like the technical details of these Yagis, here you go. Just pause the video. And I was actually just putting together the first one, and I couldn't even pull out the screw, and I wondered why. And um, quality. This is a great starting point for us. Um, very first screw pulled out, but oh, shit. Look at these Yagis. Loving it. Tell me that doesn't get you going, right? Mm hmm And here we've attached these Yagis to a, uh, a studio stand from Linko. And uh, I understand there's about a billion different ways to mount these guys. This is just for testing. Uh, it was actually such a thin bar. I had to put these wood blocks in there just to mount it. Um, but this stand has three separate poles. And so I've mounted them on different poles completely so that I can raise and lower them independent of each other. This mounting equipment also does not allow me to 45 them, which I understand is, is more the appropriate way to do this when you have two of them, but I just cannot do it with this mounting stuff. I'll have to go back to town or a city and, and buy the appropriate gear. So here's our surge protectors plugged in. Now I actually stopped into Collins Communications the last time I was in Fort Collins and I, I spoke with them about this and they highly recommended that I get a, a pretty serious four to six foot like copper pole for each one of these antennas and run it out and make sure to ground to it, like serious grounding. And they even gave me a little primer on uh, grounding over large rock structures in case I could not get the poles into the ground out here. So here's the Yagis uh, on the second floor and we're just aiming them right out the windows uh, in the direction of the tower, which we found on um, antennasearch.com. That's great, you can find exactly where you need to aim these. Here we're just gonna take off these old antennas. Now these are actually five DBI antennas, which are pretty nice from Mopi, because companies generally only include, uh, include like three. But to get a five is decent, but here's a step up to a nine. Now they say like size doesn't matter, but I don't know, I don't, I'm feeling a little bit hard up for the motion of the ocean argument right now. That's, wow, look at that. That's an upgrade. All right, so here's our Yagi's pointing out the window. That 25 foot jumper run comes all the way down here and we plug them into the Mopi. So you might be wondering, what the heck are you doing with two six foot Yagi's? And it took me a whole day of hiking to find this thing, but here's the only tower out here. This provides uh, internet and cell phone coverage for everybody that wants to live out in the middle of nowhere. And when this thing goes down, everybody's screwed. And that does happen quite frequently, but I'm really happy it's here because this is my connection to the world. So I apologize for the shaky cam skills. The wind was blowing, it was very cold, and I'd been hiking to find this thing. So very cool tower. I don't even know what any of that stuff does. That's, that's not my field. But look at that. Somewhere out there, guys, are our Yagis. You guys are obviously wanting to know what the results are from this little experiment. So spin that wheel. Oh, what are we going to get? Oh, money, money, money. Money. Look at those results, guys. Five bars, excellent signal. 81 dBm right now. And wow. <laughs> Without even playing, 17 and a half down. So I know you guys are going to be like, well, Goblin, what happens if you, you put one of them vertical or one horizontal or, or put them both at 45s like you're supposed to do? And I just don't have the equipment for the 45s, but I, I did play with these. I separated them at every distance the poles would allow. I played in every position. And you know what happens? You turn them like that, you don't get any LTE. It just screws the signal up, I guess. But if you uh, have been following this, you might realize that I was talking previously in my threads how the satellite dish actually got us a huge improvement in latency, about 25%. Here, let me actually find it in the thread right here. I said, I'm quoting myself, that we went from 100 MS to uh, 75. And 
It was true. It was a huge gain. But you're probably looking at this video going, Gob, on every single test in this video, you've had ping lower than that. You've had really good latency. Why is that? Well, that's actually because, let's head over here to our hacking. Um, the most recent build to come out of OpenWRT for the Mophies uh, came out on 420. And they actually now put the ISP time to live setting at Linux 2 or 65 by default. And what's that do? Well, as you can read here, T-Mobile uses the time to live value of packets to determine if they've been routed through a phone or originate from the phone itself. So to get around from this, or get around it, we need to add plus one to whatever the phone's time to live value was, which is 65. Now generally, when I've been using these Mophies, they just, they just come up with default, and you don't know what it is, and you can play around with it. But after this latest build, it turned on and it automatically went to Linux 265, which you can see for T-Mobile is exactly what this R hacking thread is talking about for making it think that that's a cell phone instead of a, you know, like cellular router. And ever since this build came out and we've changed that over to 65, I've had extremely tight latencies. I'm always in the 50s or 60s now. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. If you're looking for a parts list, here it is. Just pause the video and Google search any of this. So you'll find it immediately. If you'd like to see some of my other videos, feel free to check out network-wide ad blocking using Pi-hole, Debian, and Hyper-V, or maybe P2P hacking and cheating on your favorite trackers more your thing. I hope you enjoy some of the content I put out. And remember, you keep it crescent. <laughs>